Welcome to the 700 Club. Hezbollah was planning a massive assault on Israel that would have been even worse than the Hamas attacks on October 7th. Israeli forces in Lebanon are capturing the weapons that would have been used in those attacks. Paul Strand brings us the story from Jerusalem. In southern Lebanon, the IDF is showing the world Hezbollah was set to use many homes just across the border from Israel as launching pads for a massive invasion of the Jewish nation. Every house is a terror base. The IDF's chief spokesman says Hezbollah's elite Radwan units were set to strike from six of these locations simultaneously with some four to 6,000 terrorists. They used all these homes for weapon storage. You see the hand grenades here? Sniper rifles. Extremely high sniper rifles. The IDF says the invasion would have even been bigger than Hamas's October 7th attacks. Hezbollah had placed its terrorists along the border days after those attacks, waiting for the order to strike. While Israel prevented that potential invasion, it's also promising to strike back at Iran for launching more than 180 ballistic missiles at it last week. And Israel's defense minister says it will hit hard. Our attack will be lethal, precise, and above all, surprising. They will not understand what happened and how it happened. But a senior Iranian military advisor is warning for every one location Israel hits, Iran will target dozens of Israeli locations, both civilian and military. And the UN's Relief and Works Agency is back in the news, this time as a nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, after being nominated in February by a Norwegian politician. It's believed at least nine Gazans on UNRWA's payroll may have taken an active part in Hamas's brutal assault on Israel October 7th. So there's fresh outrage this week that the committee picking the winner of the Nobel Peace Prize refused to remove UNRWA's nomination, despite protests from thousands of people. UNRWA critic Hillel Neuer of UN Watch was furious at predictions the UN Relief Agency could have won. It would be really uh, an abomination. It would be obscene. Ayelet Samarano's son Yonatan was murdered on October 7, and then an UNRWA social worker hauled his body off to Gaza. Ayelet is disgusted UNRWA was in the running for the prestigious Peace Prize. We're talking about an organization that has taken a very active part in the murder, rape, and kidnap of, in, of innocent people. The UN Secretary General, who's been critical of Israel, and the UN International Court of Justice were also nominated, but none of them won the prize, which went to a Japanese organization of atomic bombing survivors. Paul Strand, CBN News, Jerusalem. Uh, let me uh, remind everyone, the UN was supposed to keep southern Lebanon as a weapons-free zone. And here Israel is showing the evidence that, well, there are a lot of weapons. In fact, every single home along that border was used to store them. And, and, and you go, well, where was the UN? Where was the, re where was the resolve to maintain peace? Uh, and instead of uh, maintaining the peace, they're actually funding the war. UNRWA had uh, salaried employees who were part of Hamas and participated in the October 7th attacks. It, it is absolutely mind-boggling that that would be allowed to happen, but then there would be criticism from the UN when Israel stands up and says we can't have UNRWA operating in our territory. Uh, it's obviously compromised. We, we just can't have that. Uh, let's recognize the truth here and recognize that the UN seems to be a rate against Israel. Uh, and anything coming out of that organization directed at Israel shouldn't be allowed to stand. And the U.S. should stand absolutely against it.